Car parts came in the mail, but it's a small package. So what is it? Okay, so what's in the bag? Woohoo! Fuel pressure regulator bracket. Got my fuel pressure regulator bracket from Freed Engineering, which is here in Maryland, as you can see right there. Um, yeah, so pretty happy about this, and I guess I'll put this on the car now and be able to hook everything up, finish the fuel lines, and I'm going to be able to now show you guys how to make fuel lines, or how I make them. So that's up next, and let's go see what to do since I have off the rest of the weekend. Four days off, motherfuckers, hell yeah. So now that I have my bracket, I'm going to go ahead and install my fuel pressure regulator onto it. Uh, it actually comes with the bolts already made, and you already have the bolt holes already drilled into it. This actually fits the AEM fuel pressure regulator and the uh, Aeromotive one, so it kind of works out nice for me. So in case I want to ever change to an AEM, which I highly doubt I'll ever do, but it's kind of a nice little perk just in case. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt up to it and see if I have any proper bolts to actually go into the intake manifold. Now, I'm not sure which size thread pitch they are, so I'm going to have to double check that. So I'm going to go ahead and mount it to this, then check for thread pitch. All right, now that I have the fuel pressure regulator on here, I can go ahead and cut the line and show you guys how I cut it and then also adapt the fittings onto it. So the way I do it's obviously not gonna be like everyone else, but I thought I'd just throw it out there showing you guys how I do it. Now I have certain tools that I like to use for it. Um, I might get some flack even for this because you know people are so nitpicky like, oh you need it this way or that way. Well, whatever, fuck you. This is the way, this is the information that I have so far. These are the tools that I have. So I'm gonna go through with you what I do to put the AN fittings on. I always found it to be a pain. If you guys have any better ideas, I'm looking forward to it. Um, there's one tool I do wanna invest in, it's called the Cool Tool. I'll actually post the link below. Uh, it's supposed to help you because when you cut this line, if you can see here, it looks a little frayed. It doesn't always look the nicest and it makes it very hard to get these fittings on. They make something called the Cool Tool, which honestly helps you put the fittings on. So I'm gonna look into that here, but I'm gonna go ahead and measure, cut, and get this done. So I went ahead and marked the line here with a silver sharpie I'm using the clamps that I got off eBay these are to help one hold the uh, AN line itself inside the vice grips here uh, it doesn't damage it actually is designed to hold it there perfectly I then have the tools then to put on to put on the AN fittings itself and I'm going to use this blue duct tape here to actually rope or, or wrap around it I should say to keep it from fraying so this is to hopefully keep it from fraying as much as possible uh, I don't think it works all that well or maybe there's something else I've tried electrical tape I've tried all these different tapes and it never really works all that great but hopefully this eliminates some of the issue um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this around and then I'm going to show you what I use to cut it with I actually just use like a regular hacksaw to cut these I've seen a couple other people do it this way. Is it the best way? No. They make specific cutters for this that actually do it in one cut, but this seems to work actually pretty well. Um, this is just nylon rope also, so it cuts very easily. So if you just go ahead and saw away at it exactly where you marked it at, it should take you but maybe two seconds. So let's go ahead and cut it. Next up, I'm going to go ahead and take apart the Dash 6 AN straight fitting here. I need to go ahead and take this apart here. This is actually two pieces and comes apart from the... Not sure what you would call it. I guess this to be the female to male end here. Uh, take that apart. You want to put the female part on first. The hose goes inside and twists in. Now I'll show you what I do to make sure it doesn't unravel because this is the real pain in the dick part. This is what it should look like when it's apart. And the piece you want first is this one here. So go ahead and you want to install it inside your jaws like so. Clamp it down nice and snug. Don't want to over crank it because once again it is still aluminum. Now this is what we have to do next and this is the unfun part. It has to get pushed in here. So what I do to keep this from moving is, uh, to keep this from moving and to get this hose in properly, you put one of the ends in, you put the bottom part of the hose in. Now it automatically wants to start fraying this out. So you take a small flathead screwdriver. Once again, this isn't the most ideal, but you push without trying to damage the fitting you push in as much as you can of the hose and the thread. Now, as you can see, it's already starting to push back on me. This isn't the perfect way, it's the way I know of doing it. After that, you just start spinning. And hope to God the bitch goes in. Now that I'm done, it is bottomed out inside. There's still threads in there, but it bottoms out itself. Should give a quick another spin. Looks good. Now, the next part is putting in the male adapter. So to do this part, handle this part, put it in the jaws, 
here, some people grease up this and this part because going down into it, you're going into rubber, so it does want to tighten up over it on you. So you can do that, but for me, with these little dash six fittings, they're so wimpy. Um, I don't see the necessity in it, but that's just my that's just my way of doing it. You don't have to follow the way I do it. I use one of these aluminum AN wrenches to then tighten it down now. These are technically only to take, put on and take off fuel hose. This isn't designed technically to install the hose, but I don't want to damage the fitting and aluminum aluminum helps it from being damaged. So I use it for that. This was cheap anyways, like 10 bucks on eBay. So I just turn it down to the right size. It is now on and it should be good to go. So I can go ahead and install this on the car now. And then I need to cut this end of it here to length. This is gonna be the drain line itself. Now I could have used a stock drain line, but it's ugly and I'd rather not. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this nice nylon and I can use a nice AN fitting at the top and it looks pretty. So I'm probably gonna look a little washed out right now because of the fact that I'm driving down the road, um, the sun's hitting me directly in the face, but I'm heading again to go see Joel at Piranha Fabrication. Piranha Fabrication, why can't I say that? Who knows? Uh, so I'm heading there right now. Uh, he's going to powder coat the valve covers now. He's going to redo the one plate I had done, and he's also going to paint the fan shroud. Now, while I'm up there, we're also going to talk about having an intake manifold made. Um, I had mentioned it to him before, and the more I think about it, the stock one's awesome, and I keep saying I don't want to change it, but <laughs> I keep spending more and more money because I want to keep doing better and better and adding more stuff. So I kind of want a one-off custom piece. Uh, they used to make an intake manifold called an RMR. Uh, I forget what the actual name of the company was. It Ray's Milling Racing or something. I don't know. Um, but it was an awesome manifold. One local guy, John Stats, actually runs it. And every time I see it, it makes me want it. So I'm hoping he can replicate something similar to it with a few minor tweaks. So I'm heading there right now, guys. And I'm going to go talk to Joel for a little bit. Maybe I'll show you around the shop. So let's go ahead and get there. So now we've got another thing going on here. I just went up to Toyota to go look at a Tundra. Just got back from that. Um, debating between buying a new Crew Max or um, Tundra or buying a Chevy Silverado. Now, I'm a big Toyota guy through and through, but at the end of the day also, I want something that gets good gas mileage. And to be honest, the fucking Tundra gets like 18 miles a gallon highway. I, I don't get it. Like Toyota used to be known for all these years, one for reliability, but for great gas mileage. And they have yet to make an efficient truck. I'm sorry, even the new Tacomas are very lackluster in my opinion. They're great, they last a long time, but they just aren't keeping up with the times. They're always slightly behind. Um, they're starting to really lose that edge, which is kind of disappointing in my eyes. But uh, I'm hoping to get numbers back here shortly. I'm working with Emily at uh, Fitzgerald in Chambersburg, PA here. Um, she also runs and helps out at Hyperforce X in Hagerstown, her and her boyfriend, Joe Miller. So waiting to hear back from that right now, but also I got more good news. I just got Powerhouse Racing couplers. Um, I was very fortunate, Sam, I had posted up on the 2JZ discussion board on Facebook and said I need to buy some new ones. The ones I had were looking a little decrepit and when I had removed them, uh, pieces of the inside of it actually came off on the actual stainless steel hard coupler. So he hit me up and said, don't worry about it, spend the money on other things and sent me these for free. So talk about customer service and Powerhouse Racing always taking care of its customers. This probably wouldn't have cost me maybe 20 bucks or something, but he said, don't worry about it, I'll just send them to you. Uh, you bought other products, so thank you very much, Sam, I appreciate it. I am looking, was looking for a Dash 6 fitting, uh, a swivel fitting, and I needed it local. I need to get something quick to finish my fuel system. Well, lucky for me, again, Jason Schmuck uh, out of Carlisle or Mechanicsburg area was kind enough to say, look, dude, I'll help you out. And he just gave this to me. Brandon Bless went and picked it up for me. Yeah, I mean, talk about car community coming together and taking care of their friends. Um, both people just said, you know what, spend the money otherwise. This is just a drop in the bucket for them. In the, the day, for someone like me, this means a lot to me. It's a big deal to me. Um, I don't have endless funds. I don't have a ton of money. I do well. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. But at the end of the day, too, I have bills to pay. I have things I worry about. And for these people to take out a few bucks out of their pocket to help me out, for someone they barely know, I, I can't even express the words that I have for that because it means so much to me. Because in today's society, I feel like everyone has become so much me, me, me. And to see someone else care about someone else, or to care more about someone else than they do themselves is very rare nowadays. So thank you very much, Jason, Brandon. Um, Sam, thank you guys all very much. It is deeply appreciated. Um, I am not looking for handouts, nor do I ever ask for a handout. I, I'm always willing to pay for something, but for someone to go this far above and beyond 
thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I do appreciate the help, and it's going to help me start finishing up the car even faster here. So that's next up on the list to do, and I'll show you guys that. So I just got the fuel hose finished up. One thing I want to say, this is the Summit Racing hose I have, which is actually kind of off kilter right now. I need to straighten that out. But see how it's all shiny and the, it, the anodizing looks like shit versus my friends gave me this nice vibrant one. And one, the neck, the 90 degree angle is better. Uh, you can already, I could physically tell that the actual tube size or the actual dash six sizing was slightly bigger than the one from Summit Racing. The finish is much better on it also. Overall quality of the fitting is just much better. I was never a big fan of vibrant, but now comparing it to even Summit Racing, I know is cheap Chinese junk, I know guys, but I was really surprised how nice the quality of the vibrant stuff is. Um, I'm definitely interested in investing more into it. The hose itself is from vibrant also. Um, but I got it cheap, so that's why I went with it. But I think from now on, I'm going to start using these Vibrant if I'm not using XRP fittings, which XRP is like five times the amount of what Vibrant is. So, yeah, pretty happy with the quality. I'm going to go ahead and install it now on the fuel pressure regulator and should be good to go. Last of the fuel system is done. Um, that's it. I don't really have to do anything else. Just waiting on the wiring harness. And the valve covers are off because I just sent those to powder coat today. Uh, I also sent out the fan shroud cover uh, that goes here. I sent that out also to have him paint it. So that should all be nice and glossy black through here now. Shouldn't really have anything that's not gloss black. I'm trying to think. Oh, he also took the, uh, I guess the show panel that usually goes here. He took that back also as it had some, it almost looked like it had orange peel the whole way through it. And he said, once, once he gave it to me and he was looking through the pictures I sent him, he said, dude, give it back to me. I want to redo it as he didn't feel it was right for me to have it that way. That's the one good thing with good quality shops. They actually stand behind their product and actually stand behind what they need. Joel is a very stand up guy, uh, very, very willing to work with me, very willing to try new things. Um, I'm very happy I found him and I feel very fortunate. Um, he's out of New Oxford, Pennsylvania. Uh, the company is called Piranha Fabrication. Um, I'm not sure if he has a Facebook page or not. If he does, I'm gonna go ahead and post that below also. Um, top quality work, he does powder coating. He does uh, full custom weld cages. He does turbo manifolds. He does custom headers. He does full tube chassis. He does everything. It's just the amount of talent this guy has and the amount of, what's the word I'm looking for? How humble he is as a person is amazing. His prices are great. Um, good guy, so I'll go ahead and try to find it below. If not, I'll find some kind of way for you guys to contact him. Um, he's always looking for work, always looking to try something new. Um, so if you guys need anything, get a hold of Joel at Piranha Fabrication. I'll post everything below. Right. Now I need to put brake fluid in. I, mean, I think the car requires dot two, but they only sell like dot three and dot four nowadays, which the higher you go, it doesn't matter. It won't affect anything. But I need to fill up my clutch reservoir here using brake fluid and then bleed the reservoir. So I need to do that here. Um, and then I need to crank down the crank bolt, which I haven't done that yet. That needs to go to 250 foot pounds. I haven't finished quite doing that yet. It needs to be done before we do anything else. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this brake fluid in, handle that real quick. And yeah, hopefully my buddy Sean gets here soon and then Spencer's coming over to help me finish up the car. Then all we'll need is, I got parts over at powder coating with Joel and I just need a wiring harness. Then I have my tuner, call him and he's in California, set everything up, we'll remote tune it and hopefully she runs and everything's okay, knock on wood. Um, actually, which I'm going to knock on wood right now because I'm still nervous as fuck about it starting and running okay. I've checked everything over and over and over again, but still nervous as shit for that time to come. So let's move on and start bleeding the brakes. Friends, Sean and Spencer were kind enough last night to come over and help me finish up the car. So the crank bolt's on the car now and everything's tightened down. Now, I should say the crank bolt was on it before, but it needed to crank down to 239 foot-pounds per the Toyota book. We went to 242, blah, blah, blah. You could, most people just literally just crank it down to 250 every time, but I just wanted to be exact. So he's actually a Toyota master tech also, and he was teaching me and showing me a couple things about the engine, which was kind of neat to know. Um, it's always kind of nice to have someone around that's knowledgeable. So we're at right now. Um, everything's back together. I put the fan back on now. Uh, the pipe's gonna have to come back off. I just have it sitting in there because I just want to see what it looks like because I'm getting excited for it all getting done. Because um, I have the fan shroud right now is out getting painted a nice gloss black. Um, I have a few other things getting powder coated, like the valve covers. Uh, the OCD valve covers were just, they look like shit from over the years. Um, I think the anodizing was done wrong. And instead of having anodized black, I know you can't see the machine marks now, whoop de shit, but it'll look nice. I think it'll match all the rest of the powder coat that's a nice shiny black. And I really trust uh, Joel over at Piranha Fabrication with anything. So I'm excited to get that back. 
Another thing, guys, that I wanted to do for you is maybe not in this one, but maybe in the next episode, I want to go over the build sheet for the car, what this cost me, break it down, why I did what I did, um, and maybe you guys can replicate it that way because I've had so many people message me, and I think it'd be easier if I just kind of go over it in this um, and try to give, I want to give as detailed as possible and show you guys what I did. Now, what I'm not sure is, do you guys just want to hear what I did in the last build, and then this is a separate build because when I did the swap, that was different. This originally was a non-turbo car, so that cost would be different from what the cost was this time, or do you want total cost? So I'd like to hear what you guys want. Do you want to hear the cost of when I had to get the motor, had to try and swap it originally, when I just ran a stock ECU and everything, or do you want to hear like what it costs from start to finish to get where I'm at today? So you guys need to give me feedback and comments on that so I can hear what your opinions are and what you would like to hear from me.